Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is a weekly rundown of events, updates, and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and also Blenders and App. And this week, we do have a lot of cool things that you guys may want to stick around and see. First off, Blender 2.93.3. The LTS is here. So for those who are working with the 2.93, you can actually go ahead and get the LTS for both Windows Store, Steam, and also on Snap. And depending on what platform you're working with, you will be able to grab these things right now and start working with it. It's very interesting to see that last week we did get an LTS release and this week we're also getting another one. For those who like to take a look at the changelog, there's a couple of fixes and updates that are now here. So you may also want to come through and check this out. Now with that said, let's go over and take a look at a developer's blog that deals with attributes and fields. So sometime within last week, last two weeks, we did get a tweet from Ton saying farm follows function. Now we actually had no idea what he was talking about at that point, but today it's quite interesting. So the attributes and field blog deals with the node thingy. So we've already talked about the geometry node. You know, there was a whole lot of conversation about that. And there are several blogs that actually dealt with that from the proposal of attribute sockets all the way to field and anonymous attributes. We also talked about the attribute sockets and geometry 2.0 proposal, the expandable geometry socket, the field plus workflow and the impact of geometry node design changes. And finally, the anonymous attributes, attribute sockets, and also the node group processors. Now, all of these things are leading to one thing. Now, we've already seen 2.93 show up with the geometry nodes. And of course, there are certain shortcomings and a couple of things that needs to be fixed. And those things are beginning to get up to speed. Now, to move the conversation forward, they're actually focusing on field and expandable geometry sockets. And for those who like to take a look at this, you want to read more about data and function flow, you might want to see how this one works. Now, this did not just only, you know, implement a couple of things. It has also changed how you get to create things within the geometry node. Now, today, we're also going to go ahead and talk about how this actually compares with Houdini at the current stage. And, you know, this is uh, something that is quite interesting. So you might also want to take a look at the prototype example. And for those who like to also get the sample file, you want to read more about the definition, the field attributes, geometry nodes, function nodes, and the next steps that the folks at Blender Foundation are going to take, you might want to hop over to the description and check that out. Meanwhile, if you'd like to get the experimental branch, which you can use to test out this bad boy, you can simply go over to the experimental section and you'll be able to grab it right here. So the experimental branch is a temporary geometry node field prototype. I'm quite excited about this one because it's bringing a cute set of nodes over to Blender. So once you have your default cube here and you go over to the geometry nodes, you know what time it is. You just select the object, click on new, and you have that. So hit shift plus A on the keyboard. And then if you go over to the mesh section, guess what? We have the mesh extrude. So with the mesh extrude now, you can now choose to extrude your meshes directly within your node. So we can go in and say, you know, like we get some distance like that. That's cool. You can also, you know, insert this. In other words, you can call this offsetting. So you can also insert this. You can play with the distance depending on what you want. And you can even make multiple copies and uh, even do some more stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this zero. Actually, let's set this one back to zero and, you know, can see, you know, we can start making some very crazy things. Now, it doesn't stop there. You can even choose to push this a little bit further. Now, before we talk about how you can push this a bit further, let's talk about the new set of things that you can now do with this. So we already know that in most cases, you might want to distribute certain points. So let's get the point distribute right there. So let's get a point distribute throw that in drop that right here and then we would like to join this thing so i'm just going to get a join node and if we connect this you notice we distribute points around this geometry let's join that node right here and because we're joining this we can now connect the both of them together instead of just having this and you know you can now go in and start eyeballing these things one after the other what you can do is you can throw in a simple math node and with your math node you can seek a multiply feature and with the multiply this gets interesting from here. So with the multiply, you can now choose to do some very crazy things. We already know that the density is what's driving these points. But then if we can connect the value to that density, and if we seek the value to come from one part, which in this case, if you're extruding your geometry, you do have a top and a side face. So once we connect the top over to the value, all of the things which we're working on, let's mute this. All of the things which we are creating or all of the points which we are distributing 
will be distributed only on the top face. So we can increase this and it only happens here. How cool is that? Now I can also take this off and connect these other one and you can see these in its lovely state. So this is definitely going to change how people would create things directly in geometry node and how they can start, you know, interacting with the geometry node. Meanwhile, if you'd also like to get this working with the other one or, you know, with this other node, you can also do the same thing. So we can pick the top face and connect this and it only appears here. So just think about so many possibilities that you can get with this. And because you already have a join node, which is more like a magic node, you can mix and match things together. Now, that's by the fact that you can do all of this, which by the way, I'm just going to go ahead and mute this. Okay, let's focus on these beautiful tool you can also choose to use the top face and define the distance okay and once you do that you get this happening and you can also play with the insert and also get some very beautiful updates here now that's by the fact that you can also do this there is also another cool node which you can find if you go over to the mesh you'd also notice that we have the mesh extrude and move so if we click on that and join that right here you can choose to make a copy and move several things so in this case we have vertex so if you like to move the vertex you can choose to move them depending on the direction which you want and if you like to move the edges you can also choose to move the edges depending on the direction which you want so in terms of creating some sort of procedural stuff this is going to come in very handy especially for those who like to make procedural game assets like chairs tables and all that stuff and at the same time if you like to make copies then you need to select the face and with that selected you can also make copies like this so this is going to bring so many things to your doorstep right now this is close to exactly what you can get with houdini so with houdini right here let's take a look at that get a box all right so let's load that box in dive right in and get a pulley extrude and uh, let's get that poly extrude right here and of course you would also notice that we have the distance and also the insert and if we scroll all the way down unlike what we have in blender which is just the top and also the side in houdini you can have access to the front the back and also the side so in this case if you like to move things back and forth you can definitely move this thing by a given distance in this case i'm extruding the entire thing but if i proceed to go over to divide into and change this to individual we can get exactly the same result okay so we can get exactly the same result and you can see here in houdini these things are considered as group meanwhile in blender they are actually not considered as group they're just considered as faces so at any point in time you like to also add several things to the selection you can also proceed to do that now if you're working with any of these things that we have right here let's proceed to connect that so that we can have that and probably you want to promote a particular attribute which you can control directly within your modifier section can click this drag that and have that connection so with this you can actually make that movement from here something else which you can also do which makes a lot of sense as well is if i choose to unmute this and of course you can notice we have this crazy thing happening there let's uh reduce that point and then proceed to just connect this one over to this point you can see that if at any point in time you're feeling too excited about this and you're wondering you know can i animate this right now in blender 3.0 you know the current build which we're working with if i switch these over to the timeline we can actually animate this so guess what happens i set this to zero i click on this button we have a keyframe move this all the way to 20 and then i can set this to maybe 80 and if we you know select keyframe one more time bounce this back press the playback button you can animate it so at this point you can now animate stuff directly from here now despite the fact that you can animate these things from there you can also choose to change the attribute type that you're working with so let's explore how that attribute thing kind of work so if you look at this part you'll notice that we have a tiny plus sign and if we click on this we can now attach a weight group so in this case once i have that selected i can go in and type in the word group which is definitely going to be the very first word and i'll click on this drop down go over to where we have our weight painting and from here once i start painting you would notice that we have that distribution happening you'd also notice that this is still within its build and uh, some of these things are missing and that is actually one thing to keep in mind so with all this lovely stuff said you can also proceed to read more about some very cool updates and stuff that you can lay your hands on because the folks at blender cloud do have a sprite fright workflow that deals with lighting and set dressing so for those who would like to learn a bit more view actually worked on lighting the animation piece 
that you can see here and maybe you want to get a couple of lessons on how you can do with faster lighting organize and also structure your lighting and this would definitely come in very handy for those who are into lighting and uh, probably you're working on an animation shot right now and you're wondering how to actually deal with lighting and reduce the amount of craziness that happens once you start lighting your scene moving forward there is some community news that you guys would definitely want to check out the folks at amd have just released a brand new plugin that deals with usd hydra from amd and of course for those who have been wondering how can we now render stuff by simply using material x and also working with usd directly in blender this add-on definitely covers a lot of ground for you i'll we'll probably go ahead and do a video about it so just in case you're wondering how you can render your usd and also play with material x directly in blender that is definitely something that you should keep your eye open for and while we talk about usd stuff there is also something awesome that folks at nvidia have actually done so some time ago we did talk about the whole idea of omniverse usd and also blender and if you do have the nvidia omniverse right now if you go over to the library you can actually take a look and see blender 3.0 alpha within the omniverse as a tool which you can launch so you can proceed to install this and this is definitely going to install the usd branch for blender 3.0 and for those who've been wondering about the integration of usd pipeline for nvidia omniverse that is actually something that is ongoing because if you download the current build of blender 3.0 the alpha and you tap N on the keyboard, you would notice that there is a current Omniverse, you know, N panel that exists here. So from here, you can import, export USDs, you can convert them, you can play with several types of, you know, materials that exist, and you can scale them all the way from 0.5 to 8K and do some amazing things. And while we speak about possibilities, there is this very beautiful add-on that you can check out. This is a very cool add-on. Actually, I never felt that I would be able to see this but now it is here a guy called jitis has actually made this and it is tetris if you've ever thought about playing tetris in blender this is something that can actually offer that to you so you just install the add-on it's for free and if you click on the play button you can definitely start playing tetris directly in blender you can randomize the icons you can click on the random icon and this is definitely going to randomize the icons for you at any point in time you start the game and uh you start playing if you press your spacebar this actually just drops the object and you can use the up arrow to change the orientation of the object and what we talk about cool free things that creators have made scatter 5 is right here so we've already talked about scatter 5 before and right now scatter 5 is here the open beta is coming to an end and it looks like everything is wrapping up as you can now gain access to even way more stuff so if you go over to the gumroad link which i'm going to put in the description you'll be able to grab a lot of things that you can actually work with right now the creator has added six free biomes that you can play with and you can use this to populate your scene for free you can proceed to go over to the gumroad and grab this the scatter plugin actually works with the scatter pro terrascape and also grass blade grass blade is available on blender market right now so just in case you would like to get this add-on as well from the folks at the production you can go in and get it for 25% off and it's very interesting to see that it comes with some of the very cool features and also supports scatter as uh, this is something that is very lovely for those who love to scatter things and also work with the geometry nodes in creating beautiful landscapes and when we talk about procedural stuff you may want to also take a look at the real-time materials for blender made available by the lovely ducky 3d now the real-time materials for blender actually comes with 200 plus procedural materials that can get you up to speed especially if you're looking for something that you can easily control and something that is very easy for you to access now working with this is super easy and you might want to take a look at the demo and in most cases if you're also thinking about getting into motion graphics there's also a lovely course that he has also created known as introduction to motion graphics it's a blender course that gets you up to speed and uh, this is also something that i couldn't just look past and i think it is something that you can go through and check out for yourself and most of you guys might also be wondering about creating cables and stuff we did talk about Cabrator, the 1.3 version that was just updated and this comes with a huge set of updates and uh for those who would like to want to take a look at this you want to simulate cables you want to create cables you want to actually insulate these cables you want to do some collision with your cables then you can check this one out and see some amazing stuff 
that you can get out of it. Now, finally, before you go, let's talk about Macron 3D. Macron 3D does have a couple of free stuff on his page that you might want to check out. Currently updated the sci-fi station, which is a free downloadable blender file. And uh, this is very nice. You might also want to check out some of the things that he has on his page that are totally for free. You can see some of these things, depending on what you want to get. Actually, there are some very nice assets that you can get. There's also some very, you know, kid bashing set that you can pick from his page. And you can also notice that there's some very nice uh, free stuff that you can get right here. I'm going to put links to all of this in the description so that you guys can proceed to check them out. And this is more like it. Tell me what you guys think about these in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And I'd like to see you guys again with the tutorial updates, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.